Does the Costa Rica idea scare you at all to think about the possibility of it not working out? We've actually thought we could have more kids now. Did you ever consider having an open relationship? Ooh, what is something that not many people know about you and why do you not share this part of you? I would say something that we don't talk about very much is our... Hello, welcome back to our channel. Today's video is a little bit different. We're doing a sit down Q&A and we asked you guys on Instagram, both of our Instagrams, to ask us some juicy, deep mm -hmm. questions. You did not disappoint. I honestly have too many screenshotted already, so we're probably gonna have to save some for like future vlogs to answer, but we have some really good ones for now. And I guess technically this is Vlogmas day 11. Yeah. So we're gonna put it in our playlist. This is gonna be one of the Vlogmases, but it's not really a like follow us around for the day vlog. Mm -hmm. But I think we're gonna get to go a little bit deeper than we would have if we were just vlogging our day, so yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get started. Yeah, get ready for some outrageous questions. You don't even know the questions. Okay. <laughs> know the questions. Okay, do you think you will put Neo and your future children into mainstream schooling? I would say we still definitely have not made a decision. Luckily, we have a few years to figure it out, but we're leaning away from mainstream schooling in a sense, I guess. I don't know if I want to go fully into homeschooling, possibly. I think we need to look more into it. I'm also excited to learn more about the different schooling options in Costa Rica, maybe a combination of the two. Actually, one of our friends is coming out with an amazing documentary all about schooling and I'm really excited to watch it. So we'll share that with you guys when it comes mm -hmm. out. But I think we're thinking something different than mainstream, but we're not exactly sure what. what yeah, say? yeah, I agree. <laughs> I think I remember we're just watching this animation that was based on a talk mm -hmm. that we'll link below, but it's all about education and how the schooling systems in the West and probably all around the world are still based on a kind of Victorian-esque style of, mm. you know, like cramming kids into a classroom, passive learning, and it's yeah. all in the aim to put them into the workforce to be workers, essentially. Mm -hmm. And I just think there's a whole nother approach and there's been tons of studies since then on mm. how to like unleash your kids' creativity whilst balancing yeah. like giving them as much knowledge and mm. and kind of boosting their intelligence and, and everything mm. at the same time. But also I think a huge thing, especially when Neo's really young for us is we want him to be outside playing mm -hmm. as much as possible. And we both learn by doing like, yeah. I, although I love, honestly, I love my school experience as well, but I don't think young kids should be like stuck behind a desk for eight, nine hours a day. I think they should be outside in the sunshine playing and like discovering through play. So especially when he's young, that's what we want to focus on. And then we'll see what happens after that. Yeah. Okay. How many kiddos do you see in your future? And has that changed since having Neo? I mean, I think if anything, we've actually thought we could have more kids now. <laughs> I think we were pretty locked in on two, maybe three. And now I think it's three, maybe two. <laughs> Three, yeah, probably three. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how it feels when we have two, but I think I just read something that was like, imagine your life 10, 20 years from now, how many people do you see sitting around the table at Christmas and stuff? And in my head, it's just like, the more, the better, up to three. I think, I don't think we can do more than three, but I was like, ooh, yeah, I think three is just like more love, more fun, yeah. but also obviously harder. So we'll see how we feel after two. <laughs> the idea of having another kid right now is yeah, no. a little bit. Over. There's a lot of questions about when the second one's coming in. It is not anytime very, very soon. I don't really want them to have like a huge age gap, but I just definitely need some time to let my body heal before we go for number two. Ooh, what is something that not many people know about you and why do you not share this part of you? I would say something that we don't talk about very much is our like spiritual journey. Um, that's the wind, by the way. It's an owl, it's an owl. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think we've mentioned it a few times, but our time in LA was such a beautiful time of growth for us. And I don't know why we don't talk about it. I guess it just doesn't come very much, but um, something else, if you want to go real juicy, is for me, my um, plant medicine journey, which is something I was personally very judgmental of before I learned about it. We don't drink alcohol, we don't smoke, like nothing. And I always pulled that in the same category, but it's actually a completely different category for me in the way that you do it intentionally and what you can get out of it and stuff. So anyway, I haven't really talked about that. I think I've talked about it a little bit on Instagram and stuff, but um, 
yeah, that's been a huge life change. And like, bef there's like almost me before and me after. And I feel like I've grown so much and learned so much through it. And yeah, that's me. If you want to go real juicy. Mm. <laughs> Uh, what was the question again? What is something that not many people know about you and why do you not share this part of you? Why don't we share that part of us? Why don't you share that part of you? I think because there is a lot of judgment around it and I think, again, like I used to judge around it so I understand, but I think, yeah, I guess like it's hard to share something that has had a, such a beautiful impact on you if you know that some people might judge you for it. Um, and I feel like I have to like defend myself. And even I guess saying like, oh, we don't drink, like to say like, you know, I feel like I have to be defending it. But yeah, it's just easier not to talk about it, I guess. But, but I'm happy to talk about it. Like, I don't want to hide it. I think like, mm. I'm glad I answered this question because this isn't, I'm not like ashamed of it. It's just something that doesn't talk, I don't talk about it very much, I guess. I don't know where to go with this. I mean, not to put a negative spin on it, but I think my history of kind of toxic, damaging relationships in my life is something I don't talk about a lot, especially online. Uh, mainly because there's no need to. It's kind of my history. Um, and I think it's just about opening up, being vulnerable. I mean, maybe there, there could be a space to do that if it was like helping people mm. that had been going through similar things, heartbreak or damaging relationships or whatever. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess that's something I don't ever really share on any of our YouTube videos. What would be one tip you would give just quickly if someone is, going, if something you learned or? I mean, maybe like trust your friends. Cause I think when you're in a toxic situation, you can't see clearly and you're, it's a whole mix of emotions and I think you can really be swept up into unhealthy relationships. And I think if you've got solid friends around you that can can pull you out of that and be like, that you can trust to give you the truth about situations, I think um, that's key. Yeah, maybe if there's a lot of people in your life, family, friends, people you trust that are kind of warning you about something, mm -hmm. maybe don't ignore it. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, what do you guys clash on the most and how do you work out your differences? I would say, I mean, we could, we could go funny here, but I'd say on a real level, I think you allow yourself to get stressed by more situations than me. And I think that irritates me, not just for me, but also for you, that you could be living a lot more stress-free, peaceful life and a lot of it is in your mind. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where we clash is like, I think I've, and maybe it's because I've had 10 more years and my personality type, I guess. Yeah. But to like figure stuff out that I I feel like we clash a little bit on how, how we view and approach the world. Sometimes. Yeah, and I would say I definitely want to work on that. And I know that stress is like the worst thing for you. So I really want to grow in that area. And at the same time, I feel like there's a balance where I feel like you don't worry enough about things and especially now that we have a family and neo and stuff i feel like i have to be like extra protective not that you're not protective but i think you're just more like optimistic like oh things gonna go perfectly and so i feel like part of me has to be like slightly thinking about if something were to go wrong what we would do yeah yeah i understand that yeah I understand that. <laughs> How did Neo sit and stand up so early? Did you sit him down in the beginning or did he sit up himself? I mean, I think I was trying to sit him up and we were just being careful because I think it's not great to do that before that babies are ready. Yeah. But I I feel like he just did it all on his own. Yeah, at one point, all he wanted to do, like he just, if he was sitting, he would be like trying to curl up and almost do a crunch. And then we'd hold him up and he would like be so happy looking around. Yeah. Once he had like the neck control. I have no idea how he did it so early. I think every baby's just on their own timeline. Like he doesn't have any teeth yet and he's almost eight months. And we have friends with kids, with babies the same age that have like four or five teeth already, so. Yeah. I think he's pushed all his energy into trying <laughs> yeah. to stand up and walk. And he yeah. is so close, it's ridiculous. I know. But yeah, I have no idea. I guess, oh, I, I think also something that's helped is giving him a ton of like floor time and time to play. And I know someone actually messaged me because they were like, oh, he's always in the buggy or like strapped to you. But that's a lot of the time that we're vlogging, it's because we're out doing something. So that's mm. a lot of what you see. But most of the day, he's just like crawling around on the floor, practicing, sitting, standing, all the things. So I think giving him as much time to do that as possible. Do you know what? Help. He actually climbed up the entire staircase today. I put him at the bottom. I stayed behind him to keep him safe. And he climbed from the first step. It's like 15 steps. He climbed all the way to the top of the staircase, just on his own. We have to put stair gates up now. So good. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. What is one part of being an influencer as a main job that you don't like? Unless this is something that we do like because I like to balance things out. Yeah, I mean, I think firstly, it's hard to complain because it is an incredible job. Overall, um, it's the dream job. Yeah, for both of us, for sure. Uh, saying that, it's definitely not without its 
kind of challenges and cons. Um, should we share one positive and one negative? Yeah, I think one positive for me is around being with Neo and that we have like full control of our time and how we spend it. We don't have to go into an office for a certain number of hours so we can just be with him as much as possible and with each other and traveling. You know, we get to like design our life how we want to. And one difficult thing is that it's really hard to switch off because there isn't a clear line like I have friends who do go to an office but then as soon as they leave at five o'clock that's it and they can go home and just fully relax and they're not thinking about work at all and we can never fully do that yeah that's what I'd say I also agree with that I think yeah the freedom positive is like the absolute freedom to you know if we wanted to just go away for six months and not even think about YouTube obviously it would impact our income but we could come back and just kind of pick up from where we left off kind of mm -hmm. so then there's not many jobs that you can do that like just decide you want to take a bunch of time off mm -hmm. or just be flexible with your time and your kind of work schedule and all of that mm -hmm. and then negative I mean yeah I think it can be become all consuming uh, similar to like not being able to switch off I think it's you're thinking about it a lot it's it's not like oh these this is the hours I'm working today and then I'm stopping going home you know yeah. I'm stopping work going home and I think the intensity of work often isn't the same amount and maybe it's just a little spor sporadic throughout the day but uh, yeah, it is more that it's it's all consuming and I'd say also probably that there isn't like a set stable income It really depends on how many videos how well the videos are performing whether we get sponsors in each month So if you look at there's no month that's the same income mm -hmm. So although this year has been really good for earning the previous two years weren't very good and It's just causes challenges like getting a mortgage or you know figuring out more official forms and stuff that like it's, really, it's really hard to explain what yeah. we do and and to like prove a certain amount of income yeah and show our yeah. income so and also for us it's i find it quite stressful sometimes if we don't know how much money we're making yeah. so how do we plan around like building something buying a house all that kind of big stuff it's like well we could just stop earning so it's just kind of scary to for me to be that yeah yeah yeah, I think if you need a lot of security, yeah. job security, this isn't the job. I guess just being self-employed in general yeah. isn't really for you. Okay. Did you ever consider having an open relationship? I mean, look, if you can do that, then that's cool. No judgment. <laughs> yeah. I feel imagine. like I've seen so many relationship dynamics with different friends and jealousy. And, it, and then also just in terms of like devoting time to each other and yourself. Mm -hmm. The idea of having to do it with another person, having to balance it in a way where there wasn't jealousy, feeling loved, showing love, not picking favourites. I mean, it's just so complex. Yeah. And I think from a fantasy level, I think some people can fantasise about the idea of like, oh, it's, you know, mm. it'll be fun. But I think it sounds like so much hard work to me. Yeah, I feel like just being in a relationship with two people is very hard work already. Yeah. So I just can't really imagine adding more. I think that a lot of people maybe assume that we have thought about it because We've been in like conscious communities and yeah. living in LA and like stuff. Like hippies and stuff. Yeah, and I th we have a lot of friends that are doing it, but for us, it's just never been something that we've wanted or thought about really. No. <laughs> okay. Does your age difference ever matter to you? Has it ever mattered? Do you feel it? There were quite a few questions actually about our age difference, which we don't talk about much, but we are almost 10 years apart. Yeah, I 90% of the time I don't notice it. Yeah. So I feel like you're much further ahead in many ways than I was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But then I think life experience and like being thrown into different scenarios, there's still 10 years of different scenarios that you're going to get thrown into. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah. But I mean, overall, I'd better rarely. Better no, know, so. I would say from the beginning, like maturity level and stuff <laughs> um, has felt equal, if not a little bit the other way. Yeah. <laughs> and then I guess the other thing that I do slightly worry about sometimes is as we age, how it's going to show. But hopefully we can both try to be as healthy as possible and stay healthy as long as possible. Yeah, she's worried I'm going to turn into an old, decrepit man. <laughs> I'm like hobbling around and no, she's still years young difference. and youthful. Right now, I honestly don't think about it at all. Like day-to-day -day life doesn't impact anything. But I just think for me, like we said, I'm a worrier, right? So if I look 50 years in the future or something, then I can start to worry about it. But you think you're gonna live to 120, so. Yeah, easy. Okay, so then I guess we're good. <laughs> Did you ever have any major disagreements about plans for a future, like which country to live in? I think, I feel like we're 
both pretty easy with change mm-hmm. and adapting. So I don't think we've had any major disagreements on. I remember with like the Costa Rica land, our friend Steven came to visit. We were already obviously talking about wanting to live somewhere tropical. We were still deciding like Hawaii, Costa Rica was an option. We were thinking about lots of things, but hadn't decided. And our friend Steven came as one of the founders of Alegria and he was just telling us about it. And in the moment, it was like right after COVID, I think. And I was just like ready for a change and ready to jump into the next stage of life. And after we talked to him, I was like, I'm gonna buy an Alegria. And you were like, what? And I was like, look, whether you want it or not, I'm buying, like I, I made the decision. And so, but obviously you were like, okay, yeah, I'm down. Um, but. I get. I don't know. I think I was just a bit shocked. So I was like, "Oh, she's. You're pretty certain." Yeah. But do you know what the funny thing is? I think since being so deadly certain, like she's, it's happening. Yeah. You've been the one that's been way more like getting cold yeah. feet and flipping and flopping about. You know, long term whether we're going to be there. And I think I feel like I'm all or nothing. That's why yeah. I was a bit more hesitant. I was like, Look, "If we're going to do this, we're going to do this." Yeah. Once you decide on something, you do not waver. Yeah. And for me, I'm like ready to decide, but also I'm like, but. Could change. <laughs> I'm. I basically go all in once yeah. I've decided to do something. Yeah. I like that. It's. I don't know whether that's like perseverance or stubbornness or whatever. It but is. sometimes it can bite you in the butt if, for example, if you've gone in all in on like a negative relationship yeah. or something, and then yeah. you're not willing to give up on it, even if it might yeah. be the right thing to do. Yeah, it's true. So I think we've got a good sword. balance. Yeah. Between the two of us. <laughs> Do you feel like you don't fully belong anywhere because you live between countries? I kind of do. I mean, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, and I don't think that's something that can ever fully be resolved because our families live in different countries. So like, I miss my family so much, especially with Neo. I just wish they could like drive over and see him and help and see me and everything. Yeah, so I think because we have like, my family's already split between Bulgaria and New York. Your family's here. A lot of your friends are here, but then we also have a lot of friends in LA and Costa Rica. I just think it's impossible to not feel like our heart is in so many different places. I would say ever since I started traveling full time, I've really viewed myself as a global citizen. And yes, I'm British and I grew up here, but I don't feel like this is who I am. It's like an integral part of my identity. I think yeah. there's way more important things to identify with. And I see with all of this, like, without getting super deep, but with all of this like chaos happening around the world with division and ethnic groups and different people like, oh, religions against each other. It's like, all of this is made up. The division is made up. But the division, yeah, yeah the fact that, you know, and countries are made up, mm-hmm. countries are literally made up. So it's yeah. like, who do we really identify as? It's like, I am like a human and we are all the same. Um, so I don't know, I just feel like sometimes people get too caught up about like identifying with being from a particular place. And I think that's just luck of the draw. So then with the question, do you feel like you don't belong anywhere fully? Yeah, I just don't feel like it's, I belong to a location. Mm-hmm. It's much more about a connection with a community that I'm longing for. But then even that, our community is split up all yeah. over the world. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like we'll always be a little bit floaty, tra- transient. Floaty, yeah. 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 Um, now that you're parents, is there one day that you would like to go back to and relive before you had Neo? I mean, any of the days where we just lay in bed all day. <laughs> Honestly, right now, I'm, s- I'm we're both of us are just <laughs> continuously tired. Obviously a big part of that is that we've chosen to take on Vlogmas as well. I think that's yeah. eats even more of my sleep away, but I think that is the, the biggest challenge is we're both not morning people. Maybe if you lo- love getting up in the mornings, yeah. mornings you could actually up. thrive a lot more with a baby, mm-hmm. but we are not morning people. I wish I could go back to a day of our baby moon. That was such an amazing trip because we were somewhere tropical and warm and beautiful. Wouldn't set an alarm clock. No alarms. We could just go to bed, sleep as long as we wanted, wake mm-hmm. up and just stroll down to the beach and just lay there, not worrying about anything. Sometimes I just stayed in bed. Yeah, that sounds so good. It's funny though, because it'd be like <laughs> people expecting us to be like, yeah, the day that we like ran up a volcano and did paragliding, it's like. I just want to sleep. It's the simple night. things. <laughs> yeah. I, I I remember asking people when before Neo arrived, like, what should we be doing like right now in the yeah. lead up, the, a couple of months before, and the advice I'd give anyone that's like. Mm-hmm gonna give birth soon or leading up to you know through the pregnancy yeah just just take all the naps all the sleep all the like you time where possible you can. don't set an alarm oh <laughs> feeling of just sleeping and then just naturally opening your eyes like oh what a beautiful morning one day we'll get to feel that again <laughs> oh, you wake me sleeping now. <laughs> okay okay <laughs>
Oh my god. It's worth it though. It's worth yeah, of it. Of course, yeah. How long have you been vegan and why? Love your recipes. How long uh, has it been for you now? I think it was I think it was 2015. Mm -hmm. Like October 2015. So, so over eight years. Over eight years. Mm -hmm. It started for me as like a no-brainer because of the environmental effect. Mm -hmm. After watching it, Cowspiracy. Yeah, watch Cowspiracy and I was yeah. like, this is on my honest reaction. I was like, look, people criticize like, oh, it's skewed figures and stuff. But it's like, even if half of this information is correct, that's enough mm -hmm. because it's such a tangible thing you can do is going plant-based. Yeah. I would say I now really differentiate between veganism and being plant-based. I think I was plant-based for a few years, maybe three years. Mm -hmm. And then I think three years in, it really started shifting to me more about the ethical. I mean, the health thing, encouraged me as well I felt a lot after I kind of worked on my calorie intake and like that first little adjustment period mm -hmm. I felt like I had so much more energy less sluggish str you know stronger um, just healthier so that was a benefit again of being plant-based but then veganism for me is true truly identifying or understanding that we have such a cognitive dissonance in our lives of, around eating meat but then loving animals and like you just most pe pet owners absolutely adore their pets but we, we differentiate animals we categorize some as like we're going to eat them and then the, the sad thing is it's not even necessary and we've proven that like eight years without a bite of meat or dairy and that's like we really don't need that and and it, people say oh it's a privileged thing there's developing countries around the world that have almost vegan diets or you know, such minimal meat and dairy just because it's expensive. Mm. I feel like there's healthy ways to eat vegan that's in, that aren't about being privileged and having a lot of money and buying all the fancy vegan stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, for me, it just boiled down to like, do I truly love animals and these creatures that we're sharing the earth with? Mm -hmm. And do I want to tr do I want that to line up with how I behave and the choices I make and it all kind of uh, intersected where I was like I can't I can't be blind to it anymore and I can't kind of hide that away in my brain of like okay that doesn't quite make sense but I'm just going to keep doing it because it's tradition and that's how I was brought up and so anyway I've kind of rambled but that that's kind of for me the reason why Again, like we said, Louis is very all or nothing. So he went from eating meat every meal to watching a documentary and going completely vegan. I was like slowly transitioning for even before you went vegan. So I didn't go fully vegan for maybe a couple of years after Louis did. Yeah, but I think I was you like were already slowly... encouraging me to eat less meat. Yeah, I was like, like oh, maybe we shouldn't have bacon in the mornings for breakfast. Yeah, or like, why don't we just order the vegetarian option? And he's like, no, I need meat. So anyway. Um, yeah, so I guess for me officially, I don't know, five, six years or something. And the reason why, I mean, there's just, it's kind of hard because it's kind of like all the reasons, like you said, environment, health, and then of course the ethics. Like once you go into the ethics, it's it feels like a part of my heart opened and I don't really want to close it again to mm. force myself to eat animals. So yeah, I just, and like I said, we feel amazing. Um, I went through a vegan pregnancy and there's a lot of questions about vegan pregnancy and like Neo, how he's doing and stuff. And if he had any issues with like losing weight cause I was vegan and stuff and not at all. He was born nine pound 10. He's only been gaining weight since then. I felt amazing throughout pregnancy and breastfeeding and everything. Um, yeah, so I think it's like... It's possible. Yeah, and I think for us it's like win, 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 win. Like all the things are just yeah. thriving in all the ways. So we just love it so much. There's a lot of people asking why we're not living with Steam Alexia anymore, which we did address in the first vlog, but if you missed that, basically, it was never supposed to be a permanent thing. They had to move out of their house really quickly and we were like, oh, come live with us, it'll be so fun. And it was so fun, but they were always like trying to figure out where they actually wanted to be next. So this was kind of like an in-between for them. And I think we just kind of made the most of the time that we did have. Mm -hmm. Just the number of evenings we had to like have dinner together, watch movies, or just have like really great chats. Because we both have kids, it would be really tough to get that much quality time together if we didn't live together, yeah. basically. So I'm just, we're, we all, loved living together. There's no like hard feelings or anything. There's some questions about that. No, we literally were messaging them today about how much we miss them. But yeah, they were just ready to go on to their next chapter. Yeah. And for those that don't know, like we've we've had years of history together. It's not like it's a new friendship either. Like I've lived with Steve in the past. We've known each other for 20 years. So yeah. 
um, yeah, I'm excited for their next chapter, our next chapter. Yeah. And we're going to stay like super close friends. Yeah, of course. Do lots of cool, fun projects together, I'm sure. Mm. Travel together. Yeah. Uh, what's the funniest thing Neo has done that made you laugh a lot? Oh, I, I, okay. The thing that cracks me up the most is when we're in bed in the mornings, firstly, he's adorable and just smiles and just like, he's so happy and excited to be awake and around us. Mm -hmm. But he basically uh, has got into this habit of like doing really good raspberries. Like, I can't even do it. He's like blowing much better than that. He like, he like. <laughs> Why can't you do a raspberry right now? My mouth's not wet enough. <laughs> there we go. So okay, so he like puts his mouth on my arm, blows raspberries, but he's got so good at it that it sounds like a fart. Yeah. So, or so, a poop. Yeah. So yeah. so uh, Ryan will be sleeping and he'll be blowing raspberries and she'll be like. <gasps> And I'm like, no, no, he's, it's just a raspberry. And the same happens to me. Yeah. So he fooled both yeah. of us with how good his raspberry is. And I are. think he's learning because he looks over and he's like, ha <laughs> <laughs> It's like he knows he's doing practical yeah, jokes. Yeah, basically. I do feel like he's a little jokester. There's been like little things he's doing and then he's like seeing our reaction and laughing mm. and stuff. I don't know, there's just so many little things. I mean, in the vlog, I don't know if you saw in the vlog yesterday of him meeting Santa, that part where he's like sticking his tongue out. I just thought that was, yeah, he's like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. and I have no idea why. If you if you saw it, then you know what I'm talking about. I was like, about. is he tasting the air? I was <laughs> yeah. trying to figure out what he... It's so cute. I don't know what it is, but I just love it so much. Yeah, just little things like that, like every day, basically. Thoughts on becoming parents late considering Louis' age and maybe having more kids? Obviously the challenge is like, can I be actively involved yeah. with sports and stuff as I'm aging? Um, I definitely can, I think. Typically, you're gonna get less active as you get older, um, have less energy, but I think being aware of that, I'm just gonna make a massive effort to like be energized, and mm. be more physical. But I was thinking, I was like, wow, in my early 20s, I was like absolutely bulletproof, like had so much energy, I could pull all nighters without yeah. feeling it. So yeah, I guess you'll maybe, mm. you've got more energy in your early 20s. I definitely feel like emotionally and like maturity level, we were not ready then. Yeah, yeah. I think how much we've grown in the last like 10 years or so, both of us having our relationship be super solid. Mm. And I think showing up like the best version of ourselves that we can now. We've learned so many lessons and things that has made us better parents, I think. So while physically maybe like later in life, it's a bit tougher if you have kids older, I think the plus side is that you've had that time to mature and like grow out of some of your issues that you are struggling with. So that hopefully you don't pass them down, the kids. That's the plan anyway. Yeah. Um, just a quick one, someone asked about my thoughts surrounding birth control. And I just wanna say, because I didn't know this, I was taking the pill for years and then my grandma actually had a stroke and I luckily had read something about it. But basically if you have strokes in your family, taking birth control can be like really risky for you to have a stroke. So I literally stopped on that day and haven't taken the pill since. But anyway, if you're on any kind of birth control, taking the pill, just look into it a little bit because I think I started taking it quite young and I didn't really know all the information. And I would just recommend looking into it, especially if you're like feeling any negative health. I think effects. it can affect your like mood and so hormones and yeah. loads of stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I would just recommend looking into it because like I said, I didn't, no one had talked to me about it before. So if I can talk to you and inspire someone to look into it, I'd recommend it. If you were on death row, what would your last ever meal be? Mm. Should we guess each other's? Or am I not gonna know? Okay, yeah, probably. Go on. I was gonna guess curry for yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With chocolate uh -huh. as dessert, yeah. And kombucha to yeah, drink. Yeah, <laughs> Okay. It's pretty spot on. Yeah. And uh, a coffee, a really good coffee. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if you, would it be some kind of like Bulgarian dish? Uh, yeah, I think I'm stuck between like the comfort foods of my childhood, so Bulgarian yeah. dishes, or if it's like a newer food, then I would just say just like spaghetti. Oh some yeah, kind of Italian, pasta. Italian food. I love pasta, I could eat it every day. And then chocolate for dessert. Yeah. I think just water to drink, is that boring? No. I love water. What's the best? <laughs> yeah. Okay. How do you nurture still being Raya and Louis after having Neo, not just his parents? Ooh. I think you're struggling a bit more with this. I think yeah. I've I've always found a strong identity in things I'm doing and little projects and whatever. So I feel like I'm, I'm I've embraced being a dad, but I definitely feel like I've got uh, other things I'm doing outside of that that I'm enjoying. Yeah, I think it's 
very different being a mom, a new mom. It's yeah. much more all consuming, mainly because I'm breastfeeding, I guess, but like I, literally every couple of hours I need to be around him, making sure that I'm yeah. feeding him. And so, in comparison this year, I've I've had two or three or four trips yeah. where I've been away for multiple days, yeah. which has been hard. Even like trips abroad yeah. and stuff, which I just, I don't even know when I'll be able to leave. And again, we could have made it easier on ourselves and done a bottle or formula or whatever, but we just haven't gone that route. So I think it's specifically harder for me than it necessarily needs to be. Um, but I think also there's, I mean, it's very well known that a lot of moms kind of lose themselves or they like have struggles with identity. And I think a lot of it is also just like, what is worth my time now? Maybe because my time is so limited, how much time I have for myself? Like what is really worth the time that I'm gonna spend? And I think I'm still trying to find new hobbies or things that will make me feel really fulfilled. So I think I'm still trying to find that thing that like really fills me up. But I think I'm also really excited to travel because travel has been that for me for a long time. And obviously we haven't, um, um, been anywhere since having Neo, so I'm really, really excited about that. And I think yeah, it's and also, been like 11 months for you, isn't it? Yeah, and also going to Costa Rica, there's a lot I want to learn about herbalism and like growing food and like pickling food, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I think a lot of that will be like the new Raya or yeah, new things that I'm doing that fulfill yeah. me. Plus I think just from an observing society, I think women are sometimes, it's not like shame, but it's almost like just being a mum isn't enough anymore. And it's like, I think I even grew up thinking like, oh, that's old fashioned for women just to be at home with the kids mm -hmm. and they should have a career. And it's like the whole feminist movement, like. Like, which is amazing, but also I feel like there's a pressure with having equality and, and everything. It's like also a pressure to like that you have to be like a... Like a career Yeah, woman. like a powerful yeah, like driven, career yeah. woman doing whatever. And I think, which is great if you are that, but I don't, I think seeing you come alive and step into motherhood, I've been urging Raya, like that in itself is unbelievable. And it's like enough mm. for you to be like, fully embrace your identity as I right now in your life. Doesn't have to be like, yeah. that's your identity forever. But right now, like I am a mum and I'm excited about it, you know? Yeah, something I read, I think even before I actually gave birth that has always stuck with me. It was something like women nowadays are expected to mother as if they don't work and to work as if they're not mothers. Mm -hmm. So it really is like, if you're not full time, amazing, present, doing all the things with your kids, you're failing. And if you're not working and super successful financially, everything, then you're failing. So, and it's basically impossible to fully do both like 100%. So yeah, I think there's so much pressure on women and I've been working really hard to relieve a lot of that pressure on myself. But I think even besides like trying to be successful career-wise or anything, I just want to find passions and hobbies that I do that are like me time and yeah, just time to refill my cup because when you're when I'm with Neo, I'm obviously like pouring into him and he's pouring into me as well, but I would love to find something that makes me feel like I've my brain's rested and I just feel better afterwards. I also really want to get back into playing volleyball because I love I love volleyball. So I think next summer we're in Brighton, I want to join like a beach volleyball team or something. That'd be fun. Yeah. Does the Costa Rica idea scare you at all to think about the possibility of it not working out? Ooh. I mean, again, I think, like I said, we're very flexible and adaptable. I don't think there's any fear of trying anything because nothing's permanent. It doesn't have to be permanent. So I feel like, yes, it's a lot of effort and financially financial investment and stuff, and it's like, it will take time and yeah, it might not work out. Maybe we'll realize, oh, this isn't the place for us. My hunch is we will love it and really, really connect in when we move there. Yeah. But I don't think it scares me. I think there's elements of being there that I'm like, oh, that's going to be challenging. It, I mean, this is mainly Raya that feels this, but I do also feel like there's a challenge of it is a little bit more dangerous out there for Neo, like running around in yeah. playing in the forest. Mm -hmm. Literally, there are like deadly venomous animals out there. So it's just things like that. I'm like, oh, I guess we just have to be a bit more aware of him mm -hmm. compared to like in England running around in the forest where he could right. basically get stung by stinging nettles <laughs> yeah. and that's it. So it's yeah. things like that that are not scary but definitely a bit more cautious. Yeah, that, definitely yeah. maybe more cautious about okay, we need to navigate that differently, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I think, oh, I guess if you look at like the worst case scenario, if we move there, build a house, live there for a few years, and then realize that for some reason we don't love it and we don't want to be there anymore, then I think we would just sell it, hopefully make a lot of our money back, 
but mainly we've learned a lot. Like if there's a reason that we don't love it, we'll have learned so much around that. So then when we're deciding where we'd want to go next, we would have a much clearer vision of what we want and don't want. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's any, like if that's the worst case scenario that we've just like learned an amazing lesson and it's prepared us more for later on in life. I don't really see any issue with that. I think maybe because I moved so much, I moved every like two or three years kind of my whole life. So I've never seen anything as permanent really. And I've always been open to like, yeah, we'll just move if it doesn't work or we'll try something new. So I think because of that, yeah, I just feel excited, and ready. I can't wait. It's been so long. We're talking, we're chatting to our friends, Kristen and Sia like every day. And if you're following their channel, Hopscotch the Globe, we'll link them down below, but they're like, they've, they're so much further ahead with building and everything. And they're just like loving it so much. And they're just messaging us every day with all the amazing things they're doing. And, just so excited. Okay, and I think, yeah, it's been 45 minutes of recording, so we're definitely gonna finish the vlog now. Thank you so much to all the questions. There's so many more questions, so I'm gonna definitely save them for later videos. Um, and if you have any more questions, don't forget to ask them down below. Thank you for watching, by the way. We're almost halfway. The vlog was just yeah. crazy. I'm it's, so proud of it. It's us. been a while, month, and I, yeah, it's it's been crazy daily vlogging again. Yeah. Uh, but like I said before we even started, like this is such a key moment in Neo's life, and I'm so excited that we're getting to document it and mm -hmm. document his first Christmas. I know, and we, yeah, I'm gonna watch these vlogs back for years. Just like so grateful that we filmed it, yeah. and I know so many of you are loving it. So thank you, thank you for all the comments and the likes and the views, everything. So we love you. Thank you for making this such a safe space because this channel feels yeah. very safe for me. Um and. We will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. <laughs>